our next presenter is already here, and it is Mrs. Uh, Alison McWinney from the United Kingdom. She is the Director of Development at Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. And this company promotes spiritual healing, which is a simple, safe, and supportive energy therapy that aims to bring balance to mind, body, and soul, as well as to stimulate the body's own natural healing ability. Please welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. And first of all, I'd like to start off with a huge thank you to Thomas and everybody who has organized this conference. What an excellent Congress it has been and what fantastic speakers we have had so far. So I hope I don't disappoint in comparison. Which way do I press this on? What, this one? That one? No, to the right. There we go. Healing in medicine today. Isn't it so important that spiritual healing, which is what the Harry Edwards um, sanctuary covers, and medicine work in an integrated fashion going forward, supporting the well-being not only of patients, but also of medical staff as well? Let's hear it for the doctors and the nurses. Um, they have been through so much in the UK, particularly over the last two years with the pandemic. And I'll touch on this a little bit more. So, in our view, healing is a classic complementary therapy that is still very much fit for modern times and an effective partner to help in the current health crisis. This is a picture of the front of the building of the Healing Sanctuary. We are based in Sheer in Surrey. And our strap line is, wherever you are, we're here for you. So we're not just here for the people of Surrey. We're here for people worldwide. Background to the sanctuary was it was established by world-renowned healer Harry Edwards, is a registered charity, and is a member of UK Healers as well, which is an overseeing governing body that sets standards in training for healers and how we actually practice um, healing as well. And this is the man himself, Harry Edwards, the healer. He's written a number of books on the subject, which although written several decades ago, are still very relevant today. And as a healer myself, I found them extremely beneficial to read some top tips from the man himself. So what do we do at the Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary? Well, essentially, we help people and animals when they are ill, stressed, or simply in need of some relaxation and regenerative me time. And as I've alluded, the NHS has been showing significant strain as we emerge from the pandemic. And both doctors and nurses have been under unprecedented levels of sustained stress and trauma after more than two years of treating COVID patients. And we've had some um, quite strong stories in the media about this, this current predicament. And even the British Medical Association commented on the problem um, just really last month. And what is frightening is behind each of those numbers is a person. So those are quite staggering figures. So we feel that spiritual healing can help bring a, spirit, a helping hand to the situation. And bringing healers in partnership with, uh, with health, with medicine, um, can help make a positive difference all round. Um, and it can help and support the positive impact of medical care and treatment. And it, essentially, it does not cause any harm. There are no side effects, so what have you got to lose? You actually don't need to be ill to benefit from healing, because it can be given from, for stress and relaxation, um, as well as any illness, stress, or injury as a therapy, and aids better sleep, and we could all do with more of that, couldn't we? So even if you're not well, the fact that you um, have periodic spiritual healing sessions can really help build your immune system against falling ill. It can even be of help to terminally ill patients because it helps them relax and it can help ameliorate the impact of um, the medication they're under and the pain that they might be in as well. So we view healing as a calming treatment which works on all levels of your body, physical, emotional, and mental. And in our practice, it's understood as the directing of universal energy to your body through the hands and the mind of the healer with specific thought for your needs. And it can help you deal with whatever, cope with whatever you're dealing with in life. 
So absolutely everyone can be helped by um, spiritual healing, and it's not linked to any particular religion, um, and is enjoyed by both animals and humans alike. So here at the um, Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary, we give contact healing, um, which is uh, basically quite systematic. Our healer will do um, a chakra scan, and then systematically go around the body using their hands, starting down the right-hand side and then the left-hand side. And quite often, people will feel heat or cold or a tingling sensation, but they certainly all uh, feel relaxed. We also do distant healing by email, by letter, um, and also we can give distant healing by telephone, Skype, and also Zoom. And these are just a couple of recent success stories um, that we've had where people have felt that we have made a difference to them. Um, we held a, a, an event last year with the Doctor Healer Network, bringing doctors, healers together. And we are still in contact with the Doctor Healer Network and looking to continue working with them in the UK. And we have actually been giving healing inside hospitals. This can be done either through paid healers, through sponsorship or salaried healers, as well as volunteer healers. And they often also give healing to patients, their families, and the medical staff as well. Um, also quoted in, in my colleague's earlier presentation, Anthony, um, Sandy Edwards is a healer who works in a hospital in Birmingham, giving healing once a week. Um, and uh, has written a book on the subject. And I, she actually gave a talk at our event, and um, it's a thoroughly good read. I recommend it. Um, so healing can be accessed outside the hospital through, in the UK, social prescribing, which is a new system where doctors and medical professionals can refer people to healers or to other complementary therapists. That's still very much in its infancy at the moment, so we'll wait to see how, how that develops. Or people can visit a healing organisation like the he Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. You don't actually need to be referred by a medic. The fact that we do distant healing, you don't need to be in the UK to benefit either. And we also do retreats at the sanctuary, either our own retreats that we scope, or people can hire the sanctuary for their own retreats as well. We have um, regular online events like Healing Circle on Zoom, where people can participate in group healing, and also um, healing uh, for you as well. Medics on retreat. One of the things we've been doing over the past year is offering free one-day retreats to doctors and nurses in the NHS to really be a, a bit of a support for them after a very difficult time. We've had people from intensive care and air ambulance in particular come to us, so people very much at the front line of medicine. Invariably, within about five minutes of their healing appointment, We've had so many of them break down in tears. And I don't mean just the odd tear, I mean absolute sobbing. They've been carrying so much stress and trauma from helping others through the, tr the pandemic that it's time we, we look, made sure we looked after them as well. And I'll finish off by showcasing um, some pictures of the grounds of the sanctuary. We have 30 acres of grounds in the sanctuary. And I think just wandering around in nature can be very healing in itself and, and very calming. Um, so this is in our rose garden where we've got a beautiful fountain and um, a, a pond as well. The healing rooms are at the back. And when you have a healing session with the windows open, just listen to the water. That can be incredibly relaxing in itself. We also look over um, local countryside. We're surrounded by farms. So we've got some stunning views around the countryside as well. And as you can see here, And we've got a lot of wildlife in our grounds as well. Um, we have deer roaming quite often, um, lots of rabbits um, and sort of birds, beautiful birds as well coming to see us. Um, interestingly, we had a gong bath outside um, in the spring 
And the local farmers rang me after that gong bath, and I thought, oh dear, was the noise too loud? Have, are they going to complain? But they reported all their animals were so relaxed by this gong bath and when we were holding the next one. Um, so animals can really benefit as well. This is our labyrinth. We have a meditation labyrinth in the grounds, which is fairly new. Um, and a lot of people go and, and use that when they come to us, when they want to think something through. There are some of the local farm animals. We've also got bluebell woods, which are quite stunning in May. Um, and uh, we've got several woods and also um, a meditation glade as well, which people find very relaxing. If you stay at the sanctuary, we've got six bedrooms. And um, if you look out towards the back of the building, this is the kind of view that you wake up to. And this is just some more pictures around the sanctuary. So I'd like to finish my presentation by saying, Thomas and team, you started the party, but let's keep this party going. I have been so struck by the other presenters here and by everybody I've met here. We've been given such a warm welcome by everybody and looked after by everybody so well. And I think if we come together on an international basis, just think of the change that we could be. So um, I'd like to throw that out into the universe, that call to action, um, to let's continue with this good work. This, this quote just really resonated with me, and I thought that it was particularly relevant um, for this Congress. Um, act as if everything you do makes a difference, because it actually does. This is um, a stained glass uh, window in the healing sanctuary that I also thought was very relevant to today and encapsulated the mood for today as well. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Mrs. Winnie, for your incredible presentation.